What's cracking, big dogs? There's not going to be a lot of enthusiasm in today's video because it's like nine in the morning and you guys are all yelling at me about Leonard Fournette getting waved, getting waved like you're seeing him on the other side of the street. So I'm here to break down the implications. Literally just waking up. I rolled over to a text message. Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette got waived. No longer on the Jaguars team. I'm not here to talk shit about how we told you not to draft him, about how he was on the big dogs do not draft list and the draft guide, about how when I went on Matt Kelly's Road Underworld podcast, he asked me about Leonard Fournette. And the first thing I said was, well, I like Leonard Fournette about as much as the Jaguars like Leonard Fournette. Mic drop. I dropped this mic, but it's like a billion dollars, so I'm not going to drop it. Here's here's the problem with Leonard Fournette getting dropped. One, Ryquel Armstead season is not a thing. Ryquel Armstead is virtually a worse version of Leonard Fournette. And the reasons we didn't like Fournette to begin with, the situation was so bad. I mean, he was terrible in his own right. Every single year he had gotten less and less efficient as a running back in terms of yards created, in terms of making guys miss. Yes, the volume in the passing game went up last year. This does not make you a good real life running back. Obviously, he has some off the field concerns as well. We'll talk about Fournette. We'll talk about Chris Thompson, Rico Armstead, and then we'll talk about the last guy in that Jaguars backfield that I really like that some of you guys probably do not know about. And that is my man Divine Ozigbo. And then we'll talk about some Fournette landing spots actually let's do that first so where are some possible landing spots for Fournette? here's the thing if you got him in dynasty like obviously you're holding on to that you're you're holding on to him you're not dropping him or nothing he didn't he's not out of the league he's not getting suspended or nothing like that he will find a team and he will find a team rather quickly but the jaguars did him dirty man we have like 10 days until the nfl season kicks off and he has to find a new team right now so godspeed to his agent i think they'll end up closing a deal the most likely landing spots i would you know it's funny as shit i went on twitter and i was like the most likely landing spots for leonard fournette and then i just thought of the top six running backs by adp i just felt like stirring some shit up on a tuesday morning why not titty tuesday we're feeling good I was like fuck it we're gonna stir some shit up most likely landing spots for leonard fournette carolina new york giants who's who's at number three zeke dallas uh new orleans tennessee kansas city so I just named like the top six running backs by ADP just to piss people off. People are going nuts in the comment section. It's fucking, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. None of those are realistic landing spots for Leonard Fournette. I see off the top of my head, and this entire video is going to be right off the top of my head, my non-caffeinated head, which is even worse. Washington, New England, Chicago. You know, people are going to say Philly and Detroit, maybe Arizona, because they all have running backs who are kind of injured right now. But I think they like what their running back room has. And we haven't seen any links to Philadelphia looking for a veteran. We haven't seen any links of any of those teams looking to sign a veteran running back. Like, I feel like a report would have surfaced or swirled about if even like one of them had talked to a Jordan Howard type or something like, or not Jordan Howard, um, Devonta Freeman or something like that, right? So I don't think Fournette lands in one of those spots. By the time this goes live, I could sound like a fucking moron, which is why I'm keeping this video very subdued because I'm not looking to take shots right now. So realistically, my thinking is the most likely spot for him to land would be either Chicago or New England. You could talk about Washington, but it just doesn't seem like the right fit right now. They already have like four guys there. They already have a grinder and Adrian Peterson, who at this point, like still honestly might be better than Leonard Fournette is. The, the problem with Fournette getting cut and then landing somewhere else, there's nowhere that he could land that would would net him more value in fantasy, right? He was starting to go into the third round of fantasy drafts. The problem is like wherever he lands now, he's just taking touches away from someone that was there. And now that person's taking touches away from him. Anywhere he lands, he's not getting, we want to talk about his receiving work getting pulled back this year because of Chris Thompson being there. If he goes to Chicago, Terry Cohen is there. David Montgomery caught like 30 passes last year. If he goes to New England, their starting grinder, their running back does not catch passes either. That is all James White's job, Rex Burkhead's job. If he goes to Washington, I mean, they have J.D. McKissick there. They have Antonio Gibson, who are better pass catchers. Like, that's the problem, is the pass catching role is going to come down so, so, so much. So where you need to get value from Fournette is going to be on the goal line, right? On the 20s to 20s touches, which is not what you want to rely on in fantasy football. So in my opinion, best case scenario landing spot for him would be New England. But that's an extremely crowded backfield right now. He would, I think, pretty easily beat out Sonny Michelle and beat out Damian Harris. But I still think those guys would get touches. And then you have James White taking all the receiving work. So the way I look at Fournette is I think no matter where he lands, he probably gets pushed back to the fifth, sixth range. And even then, I'm not going to be pulling the trigger on him because he's going into he's forcing a backfield into a running back by committee no matter where he goes. And I'm not trying to take a running back by committee 
in the third, fourth, fifth round. Unless I think there's really, really high upside. Unless I think they're in a really good offense. Unless I think there is something special about that player, which I do not think that way about Fournette. So while he's not dead, while you're holding on to him in Dynasty to see where he lands, his redraft value took a monster, monster, monster hit, as did Matt Kelly's ego. He's going to be eating some humble pie today. So we take a look at this kid, Ryquel Armstead, out of Temple, fifth round pick. You'll see right away 40 yard dash time, 445. The build is 511, 220. So, without a doubt, he is the front runner to be the early down work guy in Jacksonville. And we have Jay Gruden coming in as the OC, and we have this history of Jay Gruden using these early down two down backs really really heavily a lot of them have gotten over 200 carries in washington going back to his days in cincinnati so i want to read off the history like there's a very very clear history of how jay gruden uses his running backs dating back to 2011 which was his first year as a coach in the league he was the oc for the Bengals from 11 to 13 and then took over as the redskins head coach for the remainder of his tenure and you know what's so funny like when i was younger i didn't understand the usage of the word tenure like i always thought when some like an adult would be like, yeah, I'm tenured. Like I always thought it was 10 year, like T E N Y E A R. Like you had to be somewhere for 10 years. And there would be like a 24 year old person being like, yeah, I'm like tenured at this place. And I'm like, how, how is that fucking possible? Like you just blew my mind. Like you started working there when you were 14 it's fucking child labor laws, bro. Let's arrest this person. All right. Sorry. I'm fucking, I'm really dumb in the morning. Usually. All right, 2011, Cedric Benson, 273 carries, 15 receptions. 2012, Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, the law firm. That's who we, I should have got Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis to represent all those tenured 14 year olds. 278 carries, 22 receptions. 2013, Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis again, 224 receptions. He moves over to Washington, Alfred Morris, 265 carries, 17 receptions. 2015, Alfred Morris, 202 carries. 10 receptions. The next year, Robert Kelly, 168 carries, 12 receptions. The next year, Samaj P. Ryan, 175 carries, 22 receptions. The next year, Adrian Peterson, 251 carries, 20 receptions. And then last year, again, Adrian Peterson, 211 carries, 17 receptions. There is a very, 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 very vodka clear type of usage that Gruden uses for his running backs. He has a big bruiser that he gives 250 carries to, and then he has a side chick. Fantasy football is just a metaphor for real life, man. He's got a side chick that all she does is catch balls. It was Chris Thompson for Cincinnati. It was Gio Bernard. That was what we were going to get here with Chris, Chris Thompson and Leonard Fournette. They cut Leonard Fournette. So now those early down workers, early down grinders are not going to catch passes, but they can get a lot of carries. And it's going to depend on who they end up giving the, the starting job to. I'm assuming it's going to be Raquel Armstead, but this dude, Divino Zigbo, is a guy that I really, really liked out of college. I don't want to discount Raquel Armstead, though. The speed with the size is pretty appetizing, but Ozigbo is a guy that I absolutely loved in college. College dominator, 53rd percentile. College target share in the 70th percentile. College yards per carry, 7.1 yards per carry at Nebraska. 5'11", 222 pounds. He will likely be available on your waiver wire in Dynasty. Very, 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 very certain of that. You should go grab him. I know I have him on a couple of my taxi squads, actually. So I'm happy about that. Now, Divino Zigbo, it says 4740 yard dash here. I actually remember. I'm going to see if I can go find the tweet from like years ago when he came out. When he came out, he did not go to the combine. He had to do it at his pro day. There was no official time for his 40 yard dash. And I asked player profile, I'm like, where did you get this 40 yard dash time from? And I never got a response back. Maybe I could ask him now. But I remember seeing numbers from the pro day that were like four or five official pro day numbers that were like four or five. And I'm like, why is he not in that range? So we have no official numbers from his 40 yard dash time. If those numbers that I saw, I don't know where I saw them on the internet, but I remember seeing them and I wish someone could confirm this. But if he has a legit speed, four or five 40 yard dash speed, his profile would almost look unblemished. Good burst score, good agility score, produced at a very high level in college, workhorse size, but he's undrafted. That's the problem. But in college, he was very, 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 very good at Nebraska in his final year. So Divino Zigbo is an easy stash in Dynasty. Chris Thompson is some, is going to lead this team in fantasy points. I would probably sign my name next to that and be pretty confident in that being my take on this entire video. Listen, we didn't want Fournette because he was in a terrible situation. Now you're going to have multiple guys who are probably less talented than Fournette on a very bad offense behind a bad offensive line that doesn't score a lot. And now they're splitting carries. Whereas Leonard Fournette was probably going to get 260 to 200. 70 carries, seeding receiving work to Chris Thompson. Now it's like Ozigbo and Raikol Armstead, maybe they bring in another veteran, are going to 
split the carries like 170 to 170 apiece. So this is going to be an ugly backfield. This is one that I'm probably staying away from. You could talk about Rykel Armstead if you want to, but he's still a double. He's a double digit pick for double digit round pick for me. He's someone that I'll take in like the 10th or 11th round. Maybe um, I'm not going to start using picks in the seventh or eighth round when I'm looking to get guys like Tyler Boyd or Hollywood Brown or Deontay Johnson or guys like that. So don't let Rykel Armstead hype fucking go off the train tracks because again, look at the situation. It's the reason we didn't want Fournette in the first place and now look at the backs so that is my trying to be unbiased take on the Leonard Fournette news let's see what unwraps here let's see where he ends up landing but again I think that no matter where he ends up landing it's going to be a worse situation for him for fantasy purposes long term it's probably going to be better it couldn't get much worse than what Jacksonville was putting together here they are pretty much legit tanking at this point but we'll see what comes of the free agency of Leonard Fournette, the 10-day free agency stint, how to lose a contract in 10 days, the sequel of the movie is coming out. That's all I got for you today, speaking about movies. That is a featured film. If you missed this morning's video, which went out 5 a.m. Eastern time every single day, we looked at my top 50 overall rankings for the 2020 fantasy football season, and we broke them down versus ADP, versus expert consensus rankings, all that shit. Make sure you go watch it. I'll link it in the description, and it will be on the cards that are, I believe, floating on the screen right now. If you enjoyed this featured film, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're new because we will help you out fantasy football throughout the season. Peace.